Hey, hey guys, before you start your assignment today, I wanted to quickly review what it means to find probability and then also look at an example using a bar graph to see what does probability look like when we use a bar graph. Okay, it can be a little bit challenging, but if we first define probability and then we look at the bar graph, that it will help us to interpret what we're actually seeing and what we need to solve for. So let's go ahead and get started. We've got an example here that uses a bar graph of students that were surveyed and asked what their favorite sport was. Okay, so when I look at this graph, um, I see a couple of different things that I notice. First, I notice that the sport is listed across the bottom and the number of students is on the side. Okay, that's important to note. So as we're working through this, um, maybe we should first start with that, that definition of probability. So probability is really our favorable outcomes, meaning what do we want to happen, divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay, what is even possible? Okay, so a common question you might have, um, you, might, you might be asked something like, what is the probability that a student chosen at random's favorite sport is softball? Okay, so looking at this graph, the first thing we would new, need to do is figure out at the top, what is the favorable outcome? Well, the favorable part would be the softball here because that's what I want to know. And when I look at this graph, there are four students who said that softball was their favorite. So we're going to have a four as the favorable. And now we have to figure out where does the total come from? And so the most common mistake here is actually to say that it's going to be four out of 11 because the graph looks like it goes up to 11. Okay, however, 11 wasn't the total number of students that were surveyed. The total number of students surveyed have to come from all the different bars added together. So if we look at soccer, there were nine students who said that that was their favorite. We already have the four from softball. Basketball, there were six students that said that was their favorite sport. And for other, there were three. So we actually have to add these all together. And when we do that, we're going to get 22. So the probability that somebody's favorite sport is softball is going to be four out of 22 because there were 22 students in total. Okay, we can use this same idea um, if we had like an or question. So we could ask maybe, um, what's the probability that a student's favorite sport is soccer or basketball? Okay, well, doing the same thing here, if the top is saying soccer or basketball, or means that we're going to add. So we're going to take the soccer, which was nine people, and we're going to take the basketball, which was six people. We're going to add those together for 15. And then again, we said that there were four for softball and three for other, which gave us a total of 22 students. So we would have a probability of 15 out of 22 that a student's favorite sport is soccer or basketball. Okay, we can also be, use this graph to figure out what's the probability of something not happening. So I could maybe ask um, and say, what's the probability that a student's favorite sport is not soccer? Okay, well, if it's not soccer, it can be anything else. So anything else could be the four from the softball. It could be the six from the basketball, or it could be the three from the other. So if we add those together, because it's anything but soccer, um, it could be a total of 13 possible outcomes out of the 22. Okay, so again, the key idea is figuring out that this total piece here has to come from all of those bars added together when you're solving for probability. 